Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you energy sources for cardiac tissue and how those energy sources are regulated in a cardiac muscle. Now the primary energy source for cardiac tissue is fatty acids. So the 860 to 80% of the energy source for cardiac contraction, it is all coming from oxidation of fatty acids. Now rest of the energy is coming from lactate and glucose oxidation so which can be considered as secondary sources. Cardiac tissue generally doesn't prefer oxidation of ketone bodies simply because our ketone bodies will be spared for nervous system and other tissues during starvation. So 98% of ATPs that are generated in the cardiac tissue, it is all coming from oxidative phosphorylation process. So this oxidative phosphorylation is also referred as electron transport chain which needs oxygen for ma maintaining the electron transport chain there. So it means 98% of the ATPs that are generated here, so they are coming in the presence of oxygen, so it is basically cardiac tissue it is entire almost entirely it is an aerobic tissue it means it needs oxygen for its metabolism now since i told you the primary tissue for primary source of energy for cardiac tissue is fatty acid and majority of time these fatty acids are long chain fatty acids that are referred here as lcfas now the long chain fatty acids they need to undergo oxidation to get into electron transport chain. So the oxidation of long chain fatty acids will be going on in the matrix of mitochondria. So that means long chain fatty acids need to be carried from cytoplasm into the matrix of mitochondria. Now the short and medium chain fatty acids there is no problem here so they can directly get down into the matrix but for long chain fatty acids they need a transporter. So long chain fatty acids initially they are activated into their CoA form that is done by acyl CoA synthetase located over the outer mitochondrial membrane and then LCFA CoA that is long chain fatty acyl CoA it has to be transported into the mitochondrial matrix and that will be done by Connitin shuttle mechanism. I have a video, detailed video on Connitin shuttle mechanism. So uh, you can watch that video as in the link that is appearing right now on the right corner. Now what I would like to uh, say you here is transport of long chain fatty acyl coase into the mitochondrial matrix for beta oxidation. It needs a Connitin shuttle mechanism and there are three proteins that are involved in this Connitin shuttle mechanism and that is Connitin acyl transferase 1 which is also called as Connitin palmitile transferase 1 which is there over the outer mitochondrial membrane. In the inner mitochondrial membrane we have Connitin acyl Connitin translocase and then we have Connitin acyl transferase 2 which is also called as Connitin palmitile transferase 2. It means we have CPT1 on the outer mitochondrial membrane then Connitin acyl Connitin translocase in the inner mitochondrial membrane and CPT2 in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now the transport of long chain fatty acids through this Connitin shuttle mechanism it will be controlled at the level of CPT1. Now cardiac tissues the primary energy source of uh, source is long chain fatty acids here. So in order for long chain fatty acids to get into the matrix of mitochondria they obviously need Connitin shuttle mechanism. So the entire control of this will be done at CPT1. Now let's move on to see what all the molecules are, which molecule is going to control this Connitin shuttle mechanism thereby oxidation of fatty acids in the mitochondrial matrix of cardiocyte is controlled. That you can note here. So as you can see in the figure, so here is the figure about Connitin shuttle mechanism. So as I already told you, you can watch Connitin shuttle mechanism you, uh, about that. You can watch my video as in the link that is appearing above in the right corner. Now this Connitin palmitoyl transferase 1 enzyme, uh, it will be controlled by a melanyl CoA molecule. It's all about the concentration of melanyl CoA molecule. If the melanyl CoA molecule is high, so it will have a negative effect on Connitin palmitoyl transferase 1, thereby 
transport of long chain fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix is inhibited now when do you see high levels of melanoil coa so acetyl coa is the one which is converted into melanoil coa this will be done by acetyl coa carboxylase now the acetyl coa carboxylase it is activated in the presence of insulin so insulin it will be present in well fed condition when there will be plenty of glucose available so whenever glucose is available so insulin is increased and that insulin will keep acetyl coa carboxylase that is acc here active thereby acetyl coa is converted to melanoil coa and this melanoil coa will have a negative effect on carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 thereby transport of long chain fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix decreases now that happens only when there is plenty of glucose now how this action of melanoil coa is taken off so whenever cardiac tissue needs energy that means when atps are converted to adps and adps are converted to amp so there will be rise in amp levels so that means there is a need for energy in the cardiocyte when this happens when the amp level rises so amp is going to activate an uh, amp activated protein kinase here and this amp activated protein kinase it has got a double effect on acetyl coa carboxylase and then it has got effect on melanoil coa decarboxylase enzyme let's see how the amp is going to control these two enzymes amp activated protein kinase is going to have a negative effect on acetyl coa carboxylase thereby acetyl coa is not converted into melanoil coa on one side now whatever the melanoil coa that is already there that will be converted back into acetyl coa that job is done by melanoil coa decarboxylase enzyme basically it is going to decarboxylate melanoil coa and convert that into acetyl coa now amp activated protein kinase in the presence of amp what it does it's going to keep your acc that is acetyl coa carboxylase negatively modulating that it's going to keep it inactive whereas your amp activated protein kinase is going to keep your melanoil coa decarboxylase enzyme positive that is active so thereby melanoil coa is converted into acetyl coa so overall what happened because of this so because of the action of amp activated protein kinase negatively on acc and positively on m coa dc that is melanoil coa decarboxylase overall melanoil coa concentration decreases in the cytoplasm when the melanoil coa concentration decreases so it means its negative effect on carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 that is cpt1 here is taken off when the negative effect is taken off it means your cpt1 is free to work and that will allow long chain fatty acyl coa into the mitochondrial matrix through carnitine shuttle mechanism thereby lcfa will undergo beta oxidation to give atp energy for cardiocytes so this is how cardiocyte fatty acid oxidation is controlled depending on the energy needs of cardiac tissue so under well fed condition so lcfa oxidation decreases whereas as the energy needs increases in the cardiocyte amp activated protein kinase it is going to decrease the concentration of melanoil coa thereby its inhibitory effect on cpt1 is taken off and lcfa freely moves in to the mitochondrial matrix and undergo oxidation and give acetyl coa and nadh plus h plus for electron transport chain to synthesize atps so that's about energy sources for cardiocytes so just to quickly recap it is primary energy source is fatty acids and the secondary energy sources can be lactate which can be converted into pyruvate in the cardiocyte and pyruvate can go into acetyl coa formation getting into tca cycle and glucose of course it can go into glycolysis and later entering into tca cycle to give energy ketone bodies are not the good sources for cardiocytes not the preferred source and fatty acid oxidation in the cardiocyte it is it is controlled by melanoil coa concentration and which is rather controlled by amp activated protein kinase so that's all about it see you in my next video till then take care